Welcome back to the channel. In a grid down or SHTF situation, many items will be in short supply. In this video, we will be discussing 13 household items to stock up on that you may not think about and most of which will have either a very long or indefinite shelf life. Most of these items are very inexpensive to stock up on and you can stock up slowly. Throw one in your cart each time you go to Costco or Walmart or Home Depot. And most of these items are also going to be great for barter. So stick around. The first item is baking soda. Ordinary household baking soda. It doesn't matter what brand you use. This happens to Arm & Hammer. It's a small box. Uh, baking soda has numerous uses. You can use it for toothpaste. It treats rashes. It treats poison ivy or poison oak. You can use it as an exfoliant. Uh, you can use it as an expedient fire extinguisher. If you want to put out uh, an oil or grease fire, uh, you can clean soot off of cooking pots uh, that, you know, soot that builds up on the bottom of pots when you're cooking it over an open fire. Uh, it freshens laundry. You can use it as an antacid, kills odors in shoes and boots. Uh, you can use it to soak tired feet. The uses for baking soda are endless and stored properly. Baking soda will last essentially forever. So baking soda. The next item is actually a collection of items. Coffee. Uh, this is freeze-dried coffee. It's very easily stored. Uh, if you don't open it up, it'll last for a very, very long time if stored under the appropriate conditions. <clears throat> you can also store coffee beans, uh, whole roasted coffee beans, as long as you put them in some kind of um, uh, airtight container or a vacuum-sealed container with oxygen absorber, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, whole coffee beans tend to go rancid if they're not stored properly, which is why I recommend uh, freeze-dried. I know some people prefer drip, but you know what, if there is a grid-down situation and you're craving caffeine, uh, the freeze-dried will work just fine. It also works well for barter. Uh, also included uh, with coffee uh, is tea, sugar, salt, and spices. So let's talk about those items. So tea comes in various forms. You can buy it loose, uh, you can buy it in bags. Uh, I personally prefer fruit tea which doesn't have caffeine in it, uh, but black tea or green tea actually has quite a bit of caffeine. Uh, tea is also very easily stored long term. You can uh, vacuum seal it. Um, in the bags, they last for a long time without going stale. So tea is an easy uh, thing to stock up on also. It's an inexpensive item. Even if you just buy ordinary Lipton tea, you get, you know, 100 bags for a couple of dollars uh, and they, you know, last pretty much indefinitely. Uh, along those lines, we have sugar. Uh, ordinary white sugar will last forever if you keep it out of humidity and you store it properly. Uh, it won't grow mold, uh, it doesn't spoil, um, it lasts indefinitely, and it has tons of uses other than just eating. Uh, also a great barter item, so that's, you know, ordinary white sugar. Uh, the next item is salt. So, specifically two kinds of salt. We have iodized salt. Um, you're going to have to get iodine from somewhere. Uh, it, you know, you find it in some foods, but uh, mostly processed foods, so it's a good idea to have iodized salt and also kosher salt. Uh, kosher salt has nothing to do with being kosher. They use kosher salt in the koshering process, the ritual process of uh, koshering meat. Uh, but koshering salt is uh, very good for preserving uh, all kinds of food, uh, meat, fish. Uh, you can use it, uh, obviously, in cooking, and it has a, a lot of other uses, so iodized salt and kosher salt. And that wraps up our sugar, salt, tea, and spices or spices. Dried spices, uh, you know, basil, thyme, oregano, sage, things of that nature will last also indefinitely if stored properly. Uh, they're readily available, not particularly expensive. Uh, the nice thing about spices is you can gr easily grow those yourself. They grow pretty fast, uh, but uh, dried spices uh, will last a long time, so dried spices. As in addition to the coffee category, coffee creamer, powdered creamer, or powdered milk is another item uh, that you should consider stockpiling. It also has a pretty much indefinite shelf life if stored properly. Uh, powdered milk uh, is very important if you have kids. 
Uh, it also makes a big difference in, you know, lots of different kinds of meals. And uh, the powdered creamer, you know, I prefer some cream in my coffee. So those of you who like coffee and like cream in your coffee, uh, powdered creamer will, you know, make a big difference. So powdered creamer or powdered milk or both. The next item is petroleum jelly. Uh, this is Vaseline, but it doesn't have to be Vaseline brand. Vaseline is the original petroleum jelly. Uh, fun fact about petroleum jelly, the inventor, or I guess the discoverer of petroleum jelly, uh, Robert Cheeseborough, ate a spoon of Vaseline every day until he died at the age of 96. I don't know whether or not that's going to make a difference in your life, but it was an interesting fact that I found when I was researching Vaseline. Uh, petroleum jelly is a byproduct of oil drilling, but despite the fact that it has the word petroleum in it, it's totally non-cancerous, it's hypoallergenic. Uh, hospitals and doctor's offices around the world use it every day. It's got a lot of different uses. It, you can use it as a leather softener, you can use it to lubricate parts, you can use it to lubricate zippers, uh, plastic and metal, uh, even firearms in a pinch. Uh, you can use it to moisturize your skin, you can use it as lip balm, clean resin off your hands. It helps burns and scrapes heal. Uh, you can use it as a fire tinder if you mix it with, vas you know, mix Vaseline and cotton together. Uh, so Vaseline or any petroleum jelly, the only thing you need to make sure is it's 100% petroleum jelly. And this has an indefinite uh, shelf life. It'll last forever. Petroleum jelly. The next item is contractor's bags. Heavy duty 55 gallon or 48 gallon contractor bags. Uh, contractor bags have an enormous number of uses. You can make them into makeshift poncho, a makeshift shelter. You can use them to collect and transport water. Uh, you can use them as a ground cloth if the ground is wet. Long-term storage of various different kinds of items. You can waterproof your pack while walking in the rain. Uh, you can cut them open and you can hang them to seal windows. Uh, if you need to seal windows out for either insulation or black the windows out, uh, or, you know, seal them up because of a pandemic. Um, the most important thing is don't confuse heavy-duty contractor's bags with the black lawn bags that you can buy in a grocery store. Uh, these typically come in big box stores. Uh, you usually buy them by the case. Uh, I recommend a minimum of three mLs thick. Um, usually they're three or four or five. Uh, the very heavy-duty ones are usually four or five. You can also, in a pinch... Uh, use plastic sheeting instead, and you can make bags, but it's much better to cut bags open into sheeting than to try to tape sheeting closed into bags. So get the heavy kind. You can buy these in bulk. Uh, you know, you can buy a, a, a hundred of them for a few dollars, and they obviously have an indefinite shelf life. So contractor's bags. The next item are zip ties. Zip ties come in a myriad of sizes and colors from fairly small to pretty big, and they have a lot of uses other than securing things. Obviously, you can use them to secure bundles of cordage, electric cords, uh, rope, uh, you know, uh, hoses, anything that you can put zip ties around. If you have zip ties and they're not long enough, you can daisy chain them together to make them longer, which is really uh, versatile. Uh, you can use them as makeshift restraints if necessary. You can use them to secure items to molly webbing. You can use them to replace broken zipper pulls, repair all kinds of gear, uh, bundle and organize different things. The, the uses for zip ties are endless. Um, if you want to secure something temporarily, uh, you can use a zip tie on zippers, for example. If I want to keep this, you know, parcel closed, I can just take a zip tie, put it through the zipper pulls, um, and, uh, and, you know, close it up. And this is, this is by no means secure. This is not locked. Obviously, someone can cut this off pretty easily, but it will keep prying eyes uh, away. It'll keep little fingers away. And if somebody really wants to get in, they can, but then they have to replace the zip tie. Otherwise, you're going to know that it was uh, broken into. Um, so for those purposes, it works very well. I saw a really good uh, zip tie reuse hack. Um, so let's say you are you have something bundled together and, you know, the zip tie is closed, right? So most people, they'll just cut it and then that's it. They can't reuse the zip tie anymore. Uh, sometimes if you can try to fiddle with the little... Uh, lever that's in the end of the zip tie to try to loosen it so that you can, you know, uh, unratchet it and get it out. But that's a real pain. 
another way to do it is simply cut the zip tie right behind the head, pull the small end out, and then you can reuse the zip tie. It's obviously going to be smaller and it might be a little bit difficult to get it in on the top, but there we go. You got a whole new zip tie. So there's that zip tie hack. So zip ties, they're a good idea to stock up on. You can get literally thousands for a small amount of money and uh, obviously an indefinite shelf life. They also um, are pretty much rock proof, weather proof. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I guess they'll melt in very high temperature, but other than that, they should be mostly impervious to weather. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll crack in extreme cold, but otherwise, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much indestructible. So zip ties. The next item, which will come as no surprise to anyone is duct tape. Duct tape is uh, aptly named the wonder tool. Fun fact about duct tape. It was created during World War II by a lady named Vesta Stout in an effort to better seal ammunition boxes that were being shipped uh, to the Navy. Um, so it's just an interesting fact about duct tape. It's got a myriad of uses. There are so many videos about the other uses of duct tape other than obviously to tape things and repair things. But just to name a few, you can use them as a fire extender. You can use them uh, with cloth as a makeshift bandage. You can use them to do improvised repairs on pretty much anything. Windows, um, you can use them to seal windows with contractor's bags. You can use them to seal leaks. Uh, get the One thing that's very important is get quality duct tape. Uh, 100 mile an hour tape, which is used by the military, or Gorilla Tape. Uh, this is T-Rex tape, which I find to be actually pretty good. I, I have no affiliation with T-Rex tape, but uh, it's an excellent product. Uh, the point is that um, cheapo dollar store duct tape will not last for a long time. It tends to get very gummy. Uh, it tends to not stick back against itself after a while. It doesn't have a great shelf life. We're talking about, you know, it's got a, a short shelf life, but not a years and years and years shelf life. So go with 100 mile an hour tape or Gorilla tape, but uh, stock up on duct tape. It's um, a thousand and one uses. The next item are surplus ammo cans. Uh, military ammo cans. This is the uh, 50 caliber ammo can and the slightly smaller size 30 caliber ammo can. Um, there are commercial ammo cans available. Uh, you can typically get the military surplus cans for a lot cheaper. Uh, the fundamental difference between the two is that you cannot boil water in the uh, military surplus cans because they contain lead. Uh, surplus cans are, you know, presumably brand new, so they just need a good washing, and then you can boil water. You can boil water in the military ones, just not drinkable water. It, it's not safe. You can, you know, heat water if you want to use it for shaving or to wash your clothes or for some other reason, but definitely do not try to cook or make anything, uh, you know, that you're going to eat out of a, a surplus military ammo can. Uh, that being said, Ammo cans are an absolute wonder of design. They are, uh, they're pretty much indestructible. They are extremely water resistant. Uh, I don't want to say they're completely waterproof, but they can be. They have a rubber gasket in the, uh, in the, in the cover, which is very important to keep um, conditioned. So you can rub a little bit of Vaseline or a little bit of uh, oil on that uh, to keep that uh, hydrated. It's very, very important because otherwise they'll crack and they'll lose their, uh, their water sealing abil ability. Uh, the way to completely water seal these is to wrap duct tape around the edges after it's sealed, and that will basically make it water, very, very, very water resistant. Um, these are fantastic for long-term storage. Uh, you're not gonna get bugs or rats, uh, you know, that are gonna eat their way into these. They're basically pest and rodent proof. Um, you can use them obviously to store ammunition, but you can use them to store all kinds of things. They're very easily stackable. Uh, the handle that's, uh, you know, located in the top folds down and then there's a groove in the bottom to accommodate the handle. So you can stack one on top of another and, uh, you can stand on these. I don't recommend you standing on stacked ammo cans, but just standing on one, you can definitely use as a, uh, improvised step stool. You can use them to hold all kinds of different kits, emergency kit for the trunk of your car, fire kit, first aid kit, 
all kinds of grab and go kits. It's you're only limited by your imagination. And uh, for long term storage, uh, very little beats uh, surplus ammo cans. The next item is bleach. This is pure unscented, 100% pure bleach. Don't get scented bleach. Got to get unscented bleach. Uh, bleach is used to clean and disinfect, but you can also use it to purify water in a pinch. Uh, eight drops per gallon of water will purify water. You put in the eight drops, you let it stand for 30 minutes, and that will kill viruses, bacteria, any nastiness that might be in the water, and it'll make it safe to drink without having to boil it. It won't remove heavy metals and it won't remove sediment, but it'll kill anything in the water that's alive. If you don't have an eyedropper, you can make a makeshift dropper by taking a cloth or a piece of paper towel, dipping it into the bleach, and then using that to drop drops of bleach into the water. Eight drops into a gallon, mix and let stand for 30 minutes. That is safe to drink. You can also use it to disinfect produce. Uh, it kills E. coli, salmonella, any other kind of nastiness that might be on produce. A lot of people were very concerned during the uh, recent COVID situation. So they were you know, wiping down and disinfecting produce. One teaspoon per gallon of water, and you can use that to spray down produce. You must thoroughly rinse the produce afterwards because that is not safe to eat. All right, it's not safe to eat unless you rinse it off. Uh, you can also use it to dis disinfect surfaces by taking one and a half cups per gallon and using that to spray down or wipe down surfaces. Again, that formula is not safe to drink. The first one, eight drops per gallon, that is safe to drink. Otherwise, don't drink the other two. It'll kill you. The next item is alcohol. I'm going to be addressing three different kinds of alcohol. First, your ordinary garden variety drugstore isopropyl alcohol. This is 91% alcohol. I recommend 91%. You can obviously use it as an antiseptic but it also makes a great clean burning fuel. So you can use it indoors in a penny stove or an alcohol stove. Uh, it's also, um, you know, disinfectant to solvent. You can use it to sterilize uh, surgical instruments and things like that. This is poison. Do not drink this. Okay. This, uh, this is only used for external purposes, but it has an indefinite shelf life and uh, quite a few uses. So alcohol, very inexpensive, uh, you know, buy a, a bottle or two uh, once in a while when you go to the drugstore and you'll very quickly stock up. So isopropyl alcohol. Next kind of alcohol is grain alcohol. This is Everclear. Uh, this is 95% pure grain alcohol. This happens to be made out of corn. Uh, I think that they make it also out of uh, wheat and other grains, but um, Everclear uh, can be used for a lot of different uh, purposes. This is sometimes referred to as white lightning. Uh, it's also obviously a clean fuel, although it'd be a shame to burn it. Uh, you can drink it, but you need to cut it with something. You can't drink this straight. Uh, well, I mean, you, you could drink a very small amount of it straight. Um, this is 190 proof, so it's almost pure alcohol. Uh, so you treat it as a concentrate. You can mix it with juice. You can mix it with mixers. You can mix it with water. You can also use it as a disinfectant or sterilizer. Uh, but uh, Everclear. It's not available in every state. I don't think it's legal everywhere, frankly, but um, I have some, so Everclear. The third kind of alcohol is ordinary run-of-the-mill hard liquor. I like burden, bourbon, but uh, any kind of hard liquor, vodka, bourbon, gin, rum, uh, it doesn't really matter, scotch. Um, aside from the obvious you know, uses uh, for hard liquor, which is a comfort item, you can use it as an antiseptic. You can use it as an anesthetic. It's great for bartering. People will want liquor. Um, this is one of those things, uh, liquor and cigarettes, um, although cigarettes is not on my list because you really can't store them long term and I, I don't really advocate smoking, but uh, that would be, a, I guess, a follow-up to liquor. But uh, hard liquor, uh, you might consider keeping. Uh, obviously works as a sleep aid and it's got medicinal uh, purposes. There are a lot of different medicinal uses for liquor. Uh, one quick one uh, as a cough suppressant or a cold uh, remedy, you mix a little bit of bourbon or a scotch with some honey and some lemon. Um, you know, you drink that and it, it certainly helps to soothe a, a, a sore throat or a, or a cough. Um, but uh, hard, hard liquor. 
That's the last of the liquors or the last of the alcohols. The next item is honey. Um, honey has been cultivated by people for more than 8,000 years. Uh, they found um, uh, remnants of um, honey collecting tools and bee you know, keeping items in, I think, Spain uh, over 8,000 years ago. Honey has incredibly an a completely indefinite shelf life. Uh, sometimes under bad conditions, it will crystallize, but it's very easy to bring it back to normal. You just you put the container of honey into some boiled water, boiling water, and in no time, it'll reliquify. Uh, it's cholesterol-free, it's fat-free, it's sodium-free. You can use it as a sweetener. You can use it as a moisturizer, as a hair conditioner. You can use it as a lip balm if you mix it with some petroleum jelly. It treats injuries. It treats uh, and helps burns to heal quickly. Uh, it helps to fight infection. It's antimicrobial. It's antibacterial. It's probiotic. It helps to balance gut bacteria. Um, and like I said, you can use it as a... Uh, as a cough suppressant with uh, a little bit of whiskey, uh, some hot water, uh, honey and lemon. Uh, in a pinch, you can also use maple syrup, but uh, maple syrup, I, I strongly caution you, you gotta get 100% pure maple syrup. That Aunt Jemima stuff that you buy in the supermarket is not maple syrup. The brown liquid that you get in a bottle that says syrup is not maple syrup. Make sure that it's 100% pure, preferably Vermont maple syrup, and that will last pretty much indefinitely also if it is stored properly. It doesn't have all of the medicinal properties that honey does, but uh, in a pinch, it's a close second. So that's my runner up, but uh, definitely stock up on honey. The next item is cordage, uh, specifically 550 paracord and tarred bank line. Uh, when you buy paracord, make sure you're buying 550 paracord and not an inferior product. Uh, 550 paracord is strong. It is uh, weatherproof, basically. It won't rot. Uh, it's impervious to mildew. Um, it, it's basically uh, completely weatherproof. Uh, similarly with tarred bank line, uh, you can use both of these items for just endless number of things. Use it for a ridgeline for shelter. Use it as a clothesline to hang your clothes up. You can use it as a sling or a splint for an injured limb. You can use it as lashing uh, to you know, build pretty much anything. You can use it as a rope or a tow line or a carry strap for any of your gear. You can use paracord to wrap the handle of tools or knives to make them non-slip. Uh, you can weave it into all different kinds of things. The, the uses are, are endless. Plus the inner fibers of real paracord, you can use as dental floss or tinder, uh, for sewing thread, fishing line, uh, really there, there are uh, tons and tons of videos on the use of paracord uh, and bank line. Both of them obviously have a basically indefinite shelf life and are excellent items for barter. So paracord and bank line. Next item is PVC pipe. Uh, one nice thing about PVC pipe, it's already water safe. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about uh, cleaning it or sterilizing it. It comes in all kinds of different diameters, uh, from fairly small to pretty large. This is uh, by no means the largest size, but I think this is a six inch. And uh, you can use it to repair all kinds of different things. You can use it to obviously repair broken pipes that are in your house, but it's got many other uses. It's very easy to cut. Uh, you can build lots of different kinds of things. You can make an improvised bucket, a raised pet bed. Uh, you can use it for irrigation, collect rainwater. Use it uh, to make a makeshift vehicle, snorkel, a pontoon boat, fishing trap, bird feeder, livestock feeder, uh, JIC, cash tube, uh, survival kit. The number of projects you can use PVC piping for is endless. Um, so it's a good idea to stock up on a few different uh, diameters of pipe. Um, you can get this fairly inexpensively at uh, obviously, you know, any contracting store, uh, plumbing supply store. Uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, indefinite shelf life, obviously. It's impervious to rot. Uh, very, very important, however, to get connectors, elbows, end caps, and of course, uh, primer and cement. If you're going to connect two pieces of PVC pipe together, or if you're going to use elbows or uh, joiners or connectors or end caps, and you want a permanent seal, 
you must use primer and cement. Uh, it's a two-step process. Um, you put on the primer, which kind of sort of starts a chemical reaction, melting the metal, and then the cement on top of it, and uh, it will make a, uh, a permanent bond with the PVC pipe. Obviously, you don't require any welding or anything like that. Uh, a very large tube of uh, PVC pipe can be used to make a storage unit that you can then bury underground, uh, a JIC or a just-in-case tube. And uh, really, the, the uses are, are endless, so PVC pipe. The last thing to stock up on are building materials. Uh, other than the basic tools that you should already have in your house, uh, it's a good idea to have a good supply of screws and nails. Um, I'm talking about, uh, you know, at least three inch screws and uh, regular common nails, but you want to get the long kind of nails. You can get them in a, you know, huge bucket uh, for a, a few dollars. They obviously have an indefinite shelf life, just to store them properly. And uh, in addition to screws and nails, uh, a good idea is to have some plywood sheeting and two by fours. You want to have an adequate amount of plywood sheeting and two by fours uh, so that you can reinforce your doors and your windows in the event of a major storm or, you know, a civil unrest, a riot, uh, some other, you know, situation where you want to keep intruders out of your house. You don't want to be running down to Lowe's or Home Depot to pick those things up at the last minute. Because number one, everyone else will be doing the same. And number two, uh, you know, in the event of a major storm or civil unrest, you're probably going to want to stay in your house and to protect it. So it's a good idea to make those things in advance. If you're lucky enough to live in a house where you have a, a adequate storage, either a garage or a basement or a shed, I urge you to make, at, for at least the first floor, reinforcements for your doors and your windows out of plywood and two by fours. So those kinds of building materials are a good idea to stock up on. Uh, in addition to anything else you might think is necessary, uh, dry cement, you know, ready mix, um, bricks, mortar, things of that nature. It all depends on how much storage space you have and really how handy you are in your ability to use those building materials, but it's important to know how to do that. So the last thing on my list is building materials. That concludes our video of 13 everyday items to stock up on in the event of an SHTF or grid down situation. As always, please press like and subscribe and please post all of your comments below. If you have any questions or if you have your own list of 13 items, we'd love to hear about them. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared. <laughs>